Yes. Yes. What's yes. bro? What's going good. on? I'm good, man. You? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You got the nice. you got the whole media set up, like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm using make sure the missus' equipment gets put to use. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I got it on a got it on a tripod. Make my life okay. a bit easier. Okay. okay, okay. How are you anyway? You're good. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. Just a bit, a bit tired today. Yeah. Um, I did another one of those bike rides today. So well, how far are you going? Uh, today I did forty-five k. Yeah, that's good, man. It's too yeah. far for me, though. <laughs> nah, nah, you you could do that in your in your sleep, man. Uh, no, I've been on the bike twice. To be fair, we're doing that. Um, is it Zwift or whatever it's called? Z I Zwift? Know. I don't know. I think like that's a, that money it's, stuff. So I don't know. No, it's a, it's a virtual one on the app. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. A lot of people. So you can like race against people all over. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I've done that like twice. But bike's not for me. So are you thinking? So about it. Just running. Just running, yeah. Just literally running. I was, I was doing it at the park, and literally going down there. Obviously, we're back in the training ground now. So I've just been doing it, going to the okay. training ground as well. So yeah, just literally running. That's about it, really. Yeah, not you're really. actually gonna um, your back now. How long have you been back at the training ground? Uh, so we're allowed in in like groups of four I think it was um, I've been back there in a week mm. maybe before that yeah so something like that so a week and a half yeah, yeah. so not too long yeah. So, yeah you don't have to go in yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah what I was going to say do you find it a bit not silly but how you have to do everything because presumably you've all been tested and all of that Tested? No, we ain't been tested. Really? Yeah, obviously, yeah, you get like, um, they check your uh, temperature. temperature. Yeah, that's mm. about it. But, yeah, no, that's it really. Obviously, it's tough because, you know, like, there's obviously no date set, do you know what I mean? So, mm. you're kind of running and doing all your work. But, obviously, there's no, there's no end date for when it's going to re, when it's going to re-happen. So, it's just, you've got to just obviously stay on top of things. So, yeah. obviously, that's the, that's the tough part when you're not, not knowing what date you're working towards. Mm. I, I see, um, because obviously it's, it's, it's gone back yes, in Germany yesterday. Yeah. Back in Germany, and they've obviously scrapped League 2, I think it was. They scrapped League 2. They've worded oh, that. Nice. Yeah. Oh, wait, you haven't seen it? That they that they got what? rid of League 2? What in, oh, here or in Germany? Yeah, no, here. Oh, here, here. Like Germany. Yeah, 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 I see that, yeah. Yeah, um, no, a couple, a couple of my mates were telling me. Obviously, they play in that league, so. Yeah. Do you, do you think there's a chance that that might happen, like with the championship? No, nah, not really. I don't think so. Too much money. From what, from what we're hearing, I think it's just gonna it will continue. Mm. Obviously, you just don't know to what extent it's gonna how they're gonna do things. So yeah, it's just waiting around to to see what's gonna happen with that. So I think, like we said, it's just it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, obviously, half half is definitely gonna come first for people. But yeah, I mean, I think once we see how Germany pans out, then I'm sure. Did you watch? Did you get to watch the, the football yesterday? No, I watched it yesterday. I was just watching it then. I think it's Bayern Munich now. Half time, isn't it? So I was just watching that. So yeah, no, it's obviously good to to sit back. It's weird, obviously, seeing it with no fans. Yeah. So I'm not sure how that will play out. Obviously, it's a bit like preseason kind of friendlyish vibe, but mm. it's obviously entertainment for people, isn't it? Now, so some what sort of enjoyment for people to watch. What's it going to be like for you, like if they do say come back and only? like 300 people in the stadium allowed and blah, blah, blah. Like, is it not pointless, but is it going to be a thing of like, it's hard to get the levels up because the crowd does obviously play a big part in it. Yeah, definitely. I don't think you're going to have the same same kind of adrenaline that you'll get from obviously playing in front of so many fans. But it is definitely going to be weird. I used to think the same when I was at, at Coventry when we moved to like the Northampton ground. Mm. Like you'd go out and then there was only, I don't know, there's obviously fans only on one one side of the ground so yeah. like second half when you're playing on the on the other side there's not just one ball boy yeah so it's like it's that's weird do you know why they do that like you go to certain grounds and they just shut off like a whole side I have no idea to be honest I don't know if it's to do with tickets or I'm not sure I don't know why they do it but obviously at Coventry it was just because they weren't selling nothing because mm. obviously obviously everyone was up like not happy about the obviously the ground move so that was weird like obviously doing that um, and yeah. But yeah, that was only like sold out a couple of times when they had like away fans. There was more away fans than the home fans at one point mm. in some of the games we played in. So yeah, I don't know why sometimes they shut the 
shut the grounds on on the stands. Yeah. I don't I know, know maybe they haven't sold the tickets, so it might just be something to do with that. I know they don't, they don't have that issue at Craven Cottage now, where they where they close ah. it, um, where where they shut off the the thingy because Craven Cottage is it's just such a unique old school ground. ground. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and if they were try, to try and like change that up, it just wouldn't be the same anymore, man. Yeah, so, no, of course, definitely, no, it wouldn't be. Obviously, yeah, like you said, it's a traditional ground, isn't it? So, mm. nice, nice, nice ground, good ground, like good location as well. Do you know what I mean to get to for people? Yeah, like in and around it. So, you still there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Hello, is he still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can you oh, hear okay. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Oh, my Wi-Fi is bad. Um, yeah, no, obviously, a lot of people that I speak to, that some of their favorite grounds to come to is obviously Craven Cottage. So, mm. yeah, no, so, yeah. yeah. Is a good ground, but where do we start today? Because obviously, you've actually been on my podcast, funny enough. Yeah, and um, podcast blew up. No, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, podcast yeah. absolutely blew up everywhere. I think was that the podcast that the Andy? Co I think of all the podcasts I've done that's got in the media and stuff. Yeah, I think your one was the one that 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 has blown up the most. Yeah, so. Thank you I don't for know that. why. Well, like, yeah, got some numbers to be Picked up, picked up some traction. Yeah, yeah. It's not your size. It's that was sort at your. Oh, Deco. Say it would be Deco. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that's some any person, but it causes Deco. Yeah, no, I can't remember who it was. <laughs> yeah, so um, Fulham right now, third in the league, I believe. Yeah, third in the league, man. So. Third in the league, and how many points behind are you? Six or three? Four, I believe. It's been a while, but yeah, I think it's four. I'm not even sure. Something like that. You might have to double check that. And when I think, when it, might, you, that I think it might be six off. Mm -hmm. Six off. Yeah. So when you look back at the season, because if they were, let's just say they were to scrap the league or only the top two can go up or whatnot, that like, when you look back at the season, are there games where you look back that you might have played or you didn't play and that you feel like six those points? points the penalty. Yeah, those points yeah, are the yeah. ones. Those oh, six points. Six points. Oh, okay, yeah. Behind West Brom. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, are there games in the in the back of your mind where you think these this, these are the games where we we drop points and they cost us? Now, like, what games stick out in your mind where you've lost or just drawn? Um, I mean, obviously, there's the most recent ones. Obviously, Millwall. I think Charlton as well. Yeah, obviously, look, Barnsley and Hall. Some people are telling us, but yeah, obviously, when you're obviously when you're coming up against teams that you think that you probably should beat, they're obviously <laughs> ones that are a bit annoying when you you play well, but you just can't you can't get that goal. But it's tough yeah. as well because teams are literally like putting eleven men behind the ball to to stop us, like break us down. Do you know what I mean? So that's always tough as well to break down, like to to get it. And but yeah, when you when you drop points like that, it's it's tough. So mm. the like situation now, and you're looking back on it. Like say it did get cancelled, obviously, and the top two do go up, and then we just miss out. You're you're obviously going to be gutted, and then you're going to start looking back at at the points that you yeah. that you did drop. But then there's obviously games as well where you're thinking it could be a point game. So it's also it all depends on how the season does pan out for for anyone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, yeah. No, there, there's definitely games where it sticks out where we where we believe obviously that we should have won, but we just couldn't we couldn't get that end product, and we just didn't go our way. So yeah. yeah it, That'll be and, tough, obviously, if it does happen that way. And the goal for you guys at the beginning of the season was obviously to go up. Yeah. Do you, is there like a a set way to go up? Because obviously you could actually just go up clean outright top two, or you can go up through the playoffs. Like at the end of the day, you guys probably don't care how you go up, just as long as you go up right. But you would obviously like to finish automatic promotion. Yeah, I think if you ask anyone, they'd rather obviously go up in the top two. I mean, it's, it's less stress than any of the playoffs. So, like, playoffs obviously is a lottery. Do you know what I mean? You finish six. The, the form just completely goes out the window, but obviously going through the playoffs is, is a fantastic, is a fantastic feeling when you obviously do go win at Wembley. I mean, I was looking back today, obviously they, they uploaded like a, a little tribute of, of, of that run. Okay. Going to the playoffs, you know, and it obviously brings back great memories and, you know, you get that, that goosebumps feeling and it's obviously a massive, massive moment for, for people if they do it that way. But, Either way, as long as you're up, you're up. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's the, it's the same. It's the same how much, thing. How much of... Um, because Fulham, really and truly, are a club that should be in the Premier League. Massive. Yeah. 
you should be in the Premier League. How much of last year in the actual Premier League? Not, not do you remember, but how much of it? Yeah, do you actually remember? And do you remember the, the points in the season where you're thinking, oh, we could go down here, you know? <laughs> like, like, how much of it is still fresh uh, in your mind? That's a season not to remember, that's for sure. Um, but you, but say yeah. that, you say that, but because it was in the Prem, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, is it one of those where, okay, we went down, but how many people get to play at the highest level in the Premier League? No, of course, obviously, expectation-wise, I feel like we should have obviously done better. Mm. And, um, I think everyone knows that within the team. It's just one of them. It just it did, just didn't happen for us. There was games where we we did actually do quite well, and we just couldn't couldn't get over the line. And defensively, we couldn't hold out. And you know, we were punished. Like if you compare it to the championship, you can get away with maybe four or five chances a game. Mm. Like in a prim, every shot was in the back of the net. Like, you give them a chance. So so it was tough. But I mean, yeah, like we said, we didn't we didn't live up to the expectations. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we didn't look up to the expectations that we should have. Everyone knows that. I mean, <clears throat> and it's obviously, it is bad, but like we said, you have to learn from it. It's a lesson. You can't really dwell on it. And, you know, hopefully we can get back there and, and show what we're capable of. And yeah. Each to each to everyone own. Do you know what I mean? Like, some people might think they had a good season or average season. But I think everyone knows as a team that we weren't good enough. And, you know, mm. we, we obviously want to put things right. Yeah. What what teams can you remember coming up against in the Prem who are just like absolutely ridiculous? I remember that we spoke about this one before, the, the yeah, Arsenal yeah. one. Yeah. We spoke about the Arsenal game. In fact, let's talk about that Arsenal game. At it's not. <laughs> <laughs> because I remember you were you were saying and it's so crazy because match of the day obviously broke down that, that match. And yeah. um, you were saying that you got absolutely slated. Yeah, I got I got hammered, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah I remember just I see my phone blowing up, and I was just like, oh, you know when them ones, you know, like you've just been bad. No one wants to watch the highlights. Like, mm. You've got to give it, give yourself a couple of days to like get over it. Yeah. I remember my phone was blowing up because I went to international duty. I think not straight away. I, mean, I can't remember. If it was international duty the week after. But yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember that was getting brought up by everyone. I think I will be. I will be. It made me a treat as well. <laughs> that, game, that was bad. I remember just getting memes of that. But yeah, no, that game was obviously mad. Like, because obviously the position I was playing in, it was we were obviously playing three at the back. So yeah. I was wing back, but obviously I was meant to be way further up. So, and then obviously they were getting in behind, and obviously we didn't change the way. So obviously, kind of all came back on me, and then I was the one that got. I got targeted, yeah. but yeah, like I said, it is what it is. That's what happens when you're when you're out there playing, obviously in the Prem Championship, wherever it is. Obviously, everyone's going to highlight you, and they're going to highlight mistakes all the time. It's, yeah. it's better than I think. Everyone highlights mistakes and negativity more than they do positivity. So mm. that's just the way it is. But <clears throat> like I said, everyone's got their opinion, and it is what it is. You learn from it, you move on, and then you go again. Like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell on it. It's, it happened. Yeah. What What is your favorite? What is, what is your favorite formation to play? Because you are quite um, attacking. So, is, would you say you're more comfortable in with the three-five-two, or you know, do you mind equally four in the back? Yeah, equally, it's fine. Like wing back, obviously, is tough. But I think wing back, you have to play that system regularly mm. to kind of enjoy it, and then you've got to be utilized properly. I mean, you probably have centre backs. I don't think they like playing three at the back, you know, because they don't want to be that one that's on the right hand side because they've got to go into the channel where yeah. they probably don't like to go. So it obviously depends on the system and the players on how and how they treat it and, and how they enjoy it. But equally it's I mean, yeah, it just depends about the way certain managers play. I mean four three three is good if the manager wants you attacking like under Slav it was obviously that was great. So like that and under Gary Monk and, and Steve McLaren them kind of formations are pretty much most clubs I've been at I've been 4-3-3 so I've yeah. obviously enjoyed that and I don't mind wing back either it's it's good but it comes down when the opposition and how they set up sometimes it, you know some games are better than others and when you're in them attacking positions you know it's there's highs and lows you know what I mean there's some games you might not be as consistent as, as others and it's mm. people will then obviously ultimately really judge you on that because they want you to be getting crosses in or whatever but there's just some games where it just doesn't happen and then that's obviously what people expect of you. And then when you don't hit it, you feel like you've, you've had a bad game. But, you know, it's, it's just the way, obviously, it could have, it just panned out and the way it was shut down. So, yeah. yeah. 
it's it's funny you mentioned Slav. Great segue. Um, first, yeah. shout out all these people first. Um, beautiful game podcast, excellent podcast. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. Shout out Ball Hour every time. And um, if you've got actually, if you if you actually have any questions, um, can you write them rather than put them in the comments? Actually, write them so I can actually go through them. But yeah, Slav, this raises a good point about um, how do you say? Is it Joe Joe Camp? Jokanovic. Yeah, Jokanovic. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. But, Jokanovic um, is a tennis player. <laughs> yeah, well done. But, uh, <laughs> but um, in football, right, he's obviously got you guys promoted. Yeah? He's got you guys promoted. And at the beginning of the season, even if it's not Tottenham, I mean Tottenham, even if it's not Fulham, let's just say, it's, let's just say it is Tottenham. You go up in the Premier League, your goal would obviously be survival yeah okay cool why do you think that um even though you know he's got you guys up let's say and it's not going well it is tough why do you feel that managers still just don't get the time like do you think that low e is just totally out of the game now and that it literally just comes down to right now forget what you did um for us last season and whatnot it literally is just down to what's happened in your last game yeah, I mean, sorry, that's that, 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 that was a deep question, isn't it? Yeah, very. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I don't know. Like, it's just it's one of them, is it? It's just because there's so much money at stake as well. Everyone, mm. I think, I think now you look at it, it's the the timeline and time scale for managers to to stay in a job is tough. I think you kind of got to hit the ground running. Obviously, yeah. all dependent on owners and and obviously what they're thinking. Like, you can't speak on behalf of them because you don't know what's what's going on behind the scenes, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously sometimes can take a while to click, and you know, obviously, you, if you compare us to Wolves when they went up, they kind of kept the the core of their team and added one or two signings, and our team was quite quite different in mm. that aspect. And I think we did change the team around a lot, looking for that, searching for that winning formula, mm. and it just didn't quite happen. I mean, no fault to to Slab, do you know what I mean? But as players, we didn't perform, so you know, we have to take a lot of that responsibility. Um, you know, so I think that's what it comes down to. The day the managers getting the best out of the players, then you know it's it's great. But at the end of the day, when we we cross the white line, it's it's not down to the manager; it's down to us to to perform. And I'm I'm so happy, and, you and that's the tough thing. That. Yeah, I'm so happy you said that because a lot of the time, the buck stops at the manager. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you can have a good manager, but if the players let themselves down, you know they should equally be held accountable. But yeah, you know, the world we live in. It's not that way. Um, but um, when you go up to like, like the Premier League and everything, obviously you mentioned that the team changed a lot. But would you say, you know, it's probably better if you do manage to just keep, you know, the core team the same? Because you obviously have to improve because you're going up to the Premier League where it's the best. And a lot of people feel that they have to come and, you know, make wholesale changes. And do you feel that that's probably not the best way or it is? Um, yeah, obviously it's each their own, isn't it? But um, I think if you look at the last few teams in Wolves and Chef United, mm. they've kind of kept the same kind of players and, and they've gone in there with momentum, do you know what yeah. I mean? the same way as us. But obviously, like I said, the team was changing around a lot. You had a lot of new players come in late within the transfer window as well. So we didn't obviously have the whole preseason together. And <clears throat> it's hard when you're when you're a player and you come in for one game and you're out the next game and you don't play for three or four and then you get another another game and then you're out again for a couple more it's, it's tough because you're not getting that run of form you can't pick up match sharpness like no matter what anyone says you, there's no way you can replicate it in yeah. training whatever so people don't understand that is where your form is coming from you playing a couple games you, you, know, you might come in in one game and do really well but then you know Tuesday comes around you're a bit tired from that because you haven't got your match fitness mm. and your match sharpness yeah, I mean, you need a consistent run of game forms to to show yourself, and it's tough coming in and out mentally. Like, yeah. And then if you're if you're coming in against a team where you know that you're probably not going to touch the ball as well, like the likes of Man City and, and teams like that, mm. it's even tougher because you can't actually showcase what you're about as a player. So yeah, that's, that's obviously the toughest thing mentally. Is yeah, the mental side of that is is tough when yeah. when you're. But if you, I think if you know you have that security and. And you know the manager's going to put faith in you week in, week out. I mm. think that's a massive part. Definitely. Yeah. I think even in any walk of life, 
people, if someone shows you that backing, you, I think you go that extra mile for them. Yeah. So I think that's definitely been the case with the Sheffield, Sheffield United and yeah, and the Wolves. That uh, you know they they stuck with the core players and they've excelled rather yeah. than other players coming in and having to like, settle down and and everything. Um, yeah, definitely. Right. A bit more light-hearted for you because yeah. you're very good with your media answers. Um, <laughs> Oh, here he is, Bradley Johnson. Well done. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to mention some players that you played with. Yeah. And you're going to just let me know what, you know, your thoughts on them or how they were as players and blah, 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 blah. So, Mitrovic, number one. Mitrovic? What's, what's, what's he like to, to, to play with? And, yeah. No, he's, he's a good guy, Mitro, man. He's, he's a big kid at heart. Do you know what I mean? So, obviously, I signed on the same day as him. So, obviously, we was in the hotel. Obviously, we stayed in the same hotel for, for a while. So, I got on really well with, with Mitro. Like, we've had the same trainer as well that we've used. Mm. So, I've, I've known Mitro for a while. And, yeah, I, got, I get on good with him. He's a nice guy. He just he just wants to win. He just wants yeah. to improve all the time. You know, he's, he's passionate. And he's, yeah, he's a great player. Do you know what I mean? It's, his numbers are speaking for himself. So, yeah. No, it's crazy. Um, Sessegnon, could you always see that he was going to push on to to the next level? Yeah, if you're dropping numbers like that, at 18, whatever he was doing, that's, that's mm. phenomenal. But you just see he's got the brain. Like, I mean, you look at him, he's not going to do, don't do anything like out the ordinary, like amazing way he's driven past 20 players. But the yeah. way he runs, runs off people, the way he just pops up and taps it in, like his touch, he was, he was, mature way beyond his years like yeah. he's, he's hard to play against let's put it that way like you can't he's, he's very unmarkable because he makes so many runs off the ball he just knows where to go like he's he's good and to go on yeah. obviously to do you know that he's going to go on I think once he gets that good run against for Tottenham he's going to obviously be unbelievable yeah because he's, he's an athlete do you feel like his best you remember Gareth Bell started off as a left back and then yeah had those games against Inter whatever and then pushed on to um further up the pitch. Do you think Sessegnon's got that in him or looking at him? Obviously, what you say doesn't actually matter, obviously. But could you see him playing further up the field, like, in future? Well, to be fair, I only seen him play. I didn't really... I played against him once or twice. The left back, when, when I was here, he was always left wing. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, sometimes I thought maybe, yeah, left back. But then sometimes you see, like, left wing. Do you know what I mean? It's, mm. His numbers where he's scoring and, and assists. So, yeah. But he can do that from left back. I think from left back, he's he's hard to mark. He's dangerous because then runs, he can mm. run, boy. <laughs> and he's quick. Yeah, he's quick. The runs mm. that you, like he's, he's tough to play against. It's, when I played against him at left back, he was tough to play against. It was yeah. tough that day for us. Like, for the runs that, because he, he's coming from late and he's quick. And like I said, he's smart with his runs. You, you don't see some of them coming. So I don't know. He's, he's got it in him to play both. But yeah. I think, I don't know. I wouldn't know what it, I mean, you'd have to ask him what his best position is. But, I mean, I could see him playing at left back, but then you can see him playing at, at left wing. But I think yeah. he'd make a really good left back, though. But, okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to get through to, through some questions now. Toughest player you've played against this season? This season? Um, this season. I'm just trying to think who we played. Um, it's going to have to be, be one of the Man City boys. This season? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, had yeah. them in the cup, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well. Yeah, David Silva, people like that. They're just, yeah. How good is David Silva? You're not going to get the ball off him, that's for sure. <laughs> they was chasing his shadows. And... So, yeah. No, he, David Silva's tough. Like, mm. It's crazy. You yeah. think you're going to get the ball and then you're going to go in to try to tackle them and then all of a sudden, nowhere, you're nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're different levels. I remember that game, actually. I've, I've, we spoke about it already. Yeah. yeah. When you got yeah. um, a player sent off in how long was it? Four minutes or something? Right, oh, it's the first ten minutes. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. How like, how how much does your head go seeing that after on the pitch? Imagine you're on the pitch now. Well, you're on the pitch. Uh, Five minutes into the game against City, FA Cup, player gets sent off. Your head must just literally go. Do you know what? Like like I said, I didn't actually know that he got sent off at the point. Like mm. I didn't know the ref so I didn't see how how he got sent off and what happened. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, obviously it's tough. Like, going Man City anyway away is with 11 men, it's going to be tough. With 10 men, obviously, it's, it's even harder. But like I said, that, 
that stuff happens in football. So to be mm. fair, your head doesn't really go like you obviously you know it's going to be tough and you're in for a battle. But yeah, I think it it kind of drives you on a bit more to to just go that little bit further. So. Uh, um, who's the best player you've exchanged shirts? Shirts with. Um, mm. I'm gonna say I've got a couple to be fair. Salah, oh, a good one. Um, Hamsik, when I played against him in Ireland. Oh, Merrick Hamsik. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's a good, a good player. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of shirts. That um, trying to think who else there is. Um, well, I don't even know actually. Yeah, um, I've got a good NBA jersey. I've got um, Dirk, um, Dirk Nowitzki. He signed it, so that's that's a. If you're looking at a different sport, that's a good one for me. Yeah, because I like basketball. So yeah, yeah. No, I'd say. Yeah, Salah, you've got to put up there, Salah. Yeah. Salah would be the best one. I've picked this question because I, I feel like I'm, I already know the answer to this one because everyone says this person. But the <laughs> player you played with? Yeah, Adama. <laughs> there's no, there's no competition. You can't. <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone knows. He's the quickest man in football, 100%. I don't know. It's so funny because I've had a couple of people on that, that have played with him. So, uh, Darren Randolph. Yeah. Someone else, I can't remember someone else. Um, and even Van Ono, Patrick Van Ono said the other day that um, yeah. Adama is literally just too quick. But I don't even think he runs, he doesn't run at full pace either. That's he's just taking a piss. Mm. I remember yeah. when was that middle as well, we had to do like the sprint, like this sprint test thing. Yeah, pick up your full pace. So obviously, I knew Adama was quick. I was like, Adama, come on, like, let's, let's sprint. Yeah, I was going my hardest and then. No, he he jogged past me, and he was laughing as well. It was demoralising because <laughs> I was the at the I had the second quickest time there, so I was thinking, yeah, like it wasn't far off his. But you sure? And I, yeah, well, I, I could not run a bit, you know. <laughs> and but yeah, no, nah, like he was no, nah, it's it's different level. Like I I didn't see him sprint properly. I maybe seen him sprint probably once, mm. and that's when he ran the whole length of the pitch in less than ten seconds. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here's one. Thoughts on Scott Parker as a manager? I know you think very highly of him. Oh, he's good. Good manager, man. I mean, he's got it. He's got that. I think he's took the way he is as a player. His same drive into into being a manager. Like I've said before, it's, I think for him, it may be, I don't know, I can't speak on his half, but it's probably tough going from playing with certain players and now being their manager. Obviously, you have to kind of maybe destabilise that relationship so yeah no he's, he's good he's, he's very thorough he's passionate about it so yeah he's going to obviously have a, a good game he's the same as everyone like he's just he's obviously young a young manager he's going to make mistakes and he's learning as well and, does, uh, he ever, does he ever does he ever in with training still yeah yeah, yeah. he's probably better than most of us as well <laughs> oh, is it yeah no he joins in all the time to be fair to him yeah no he's, he's he can still play yeah. So, yeah. No, he keeps himself fit. So yeah, yeah no, he, he joins in a lot. No, he's like I said, he he comes in. He doesn't he doesn't look out of place to be fair. Yeah. Um. Oh, let me see this one. Why do you think Coventry has so many good players from the city? Uh, you, Wilson, Madison, Jordan Clark, Shipley, Connor Thomas, and Willis. Have they got a good um academy down at Coventry? Yeah, just one of the one of the top ones. Like in terms of producing yeah. players. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I know it come out not long ago. I think I think he was in the top ten. Oh really? Most, like, well, it was high up for first team appearances mm. for a cat from academy players as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know why they produce so many good. It's just one of them. I don't think there's much else to do in, in Coventry in that sense. Yeah. Um, and I think they know that they have to produce players as well to, mm. <clears throat> to get the funding. And yeah, the money. Yeah. Ultimately, um, there was good good coaches there as well. I think everyone as well, because everyone grew up together and they know each other. It just it made life easier as well. And we knew that there was a chance maybe to get into the first team and play, like yeah. be regular. So you've definitely got to have a drive. Whereas I think other clubs, because they know that they can just go out and buy players, then you know there's not that much incentive for for the young boys to maybe even try and make it to that first team. So yeah, yeah maybe that's a reason. Not, I On that, funny enough, because you started off at Coventry, did you feel that? Um, like coming through the team that you were always going to be sold because that's the nature of things that you know good young players get sold or was it a thing where at the time you were like 
I'm just going to play for Coventry and I'm happy here and blah, blah, blah? Or did you know in the back of your mind, I'm, I think, I'm going to push on? Yeah, like coming through, like I don't, I don't think it was, you wouldn't have thought about that, like oh, I'm going to get sold. Because mm. do you think obviously there was always kind of that money trouble, but really and truly until I started playing there, um, you didn't know too much about it. It was just, mm. but you always just knew that there was that opportunity. I think that season, a lot of people left. They had a, good, a lot of people out of contract. Yeah. So a lot of good players. And then, yeah, I think no one really ever thought about that. But then obviously when you start playing, you know that they're probably more than likely going to sell you and accept mm. an offer. And yeah. I think at that time as well, if there was a bit of funding, um, they could have kept hold of a lot of players. Mm. And we would have got promoted. I think there was that season where we started on minus 10 or whatever it was. Yeah. I remember that. That's a yeah. wild card. Yeah, and then we got ourselves up there. We went on a mad streak of winning. Like, Mark Robbins, when he was there as well, he was winning all the time. Dave mm. McGoldrick come in and was unbelievable that season. And then, obviously, he left. Leon Clark come in, started scoring as well. Yeah. But then the money, just they didn't have the money to keep hold of everyone. So mm. they knew that, obviously, we have to sell players. We have to get rid. So if they just maybe put a bit of money towards it, I think that season there, they would have probably got us. We would have got ourselves back into the championship. I'm 100% certain of it because we were flying. And then it just, we lost our key players. And yeah, it just kind of not went downhill, but it was just, yeah. yeah but obviously, well, you could say it went downhill because obviously, then obviously now they ended up in League Two, now they're League One, and then now they're top of that league. So, you know, hopefully they'll be back there because it's a massive club. Yeah. Uh, there's no there's no doubt in that. So it'll be good to see them back if they can, if they can get back up there. I mean, obviously, pending what's going to happen. And that's where you started off your. Um... Yeah. Your, your career and obviously this question here um, basically goes into that so what inspired you to get into football as a child? Um, I, I can't even remember to be honest I don't know what it was about football but I just remember I used to always just go and my granddad used to take me up the the common the park whatever you want to call it Yeah, and it just from there like he used to just get me playing around with the ball and then there was a team there there was a team there training and they was like a bit older, and I just joined in. And they tried to put me in goal, like they were trying to like they tried to mug me off a bit. You know what I mean? Like, and at them times, yeah, I couldn't even afford the boots, so I was playing in trainers, and like, one yeah. of them was laughing at me. But like I was always just like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like not bother me. Like I was just thinking to myself, I'm not better than you. Yeah. <laughs> even though I've never played, like, but I just knew that I could play a bit. And then yeah, then I come out and, and done well, and then just went from there. I think year and a half later then that's when I signed for Coventry when you were obviously legally allowed to yeah so yeah that was really obviously I come from a sporting family so it was obviously that wasn't football wasn't the main sport no mm. one in my family really really played football to be honest it what was, was it boxing sport. boxing yeah. yeah and to be fair some of them they played rugby as well mm. so yeah it was really boxing and rugby so and then athletics as well that was the other one mm. and so yeah they were the main football wasn't the main one I think I was probably the first that really did start playing the football really to be honest yeah and you're based on this question I want to ask is based on you at Coventry did you feel a great amount of pressure being a regular starter in your first season in league football because yeah because you were you were playing like proper games like you were probably yeah, first, I played 44 my first season I yeah think. I think I started 40 and then mm. I done my knee. I hurt my knee. And I tore my meniscus. Um, so, yeah. Like, it was kind of mad, obviously. Like, I went away. I was, the year before, I was on loan. Mm. Um, and I done well on my loan. And then I got called back before the end of that season under A.D. Boothroy. And I think, no, Andy Form, sorry. Mm. Andy Form was still there. Uh, he just took over Kedden. And I come back. And then I was in and around the first team. And then that season, I just... I didn't even go on holiday. I didn't do nothing. I just, I knew there was a chance. Like, so I just literally grafted, come back, come back the fittest. Um, I was training well, doing well in pre-season. Um, and then obviously we didn't even have the numbers. Like, you know, usually in pre-season you can change the 11 around the yeah. first half. Like I had to play 90 minutes first pre-season game. Like got through it. And then, yeah, it just like went from there. First game was obviously I managed to start. It just, yeah, just out of the blue, like, I wasn't expecting to play as many games as I did and then I just literally got a run of games. Mm. I was playing week in, week out and I was playing well. I was the, it was me and Gail and then obviously CT as well. Like, yeah, Callum wasn't really playing that season. Jordan Clark, obviously, and he got injured. 
Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Your, your name. These are players yeah. who all that pushed on in that. Exactly. Yeah. So it was it was good. Like obviously there was a lot of a lot of good players around, but we just we were a good team, but we just couldn't. We just didn't have enough to score. Like we didn't have a goal scorer. Like Jukovic scored a lot, and then he left and went to Middlesbrough. Mm. I think it was. Yeah. And we just couldn't replace him, and we just couldn't hold on. Like we we would dominate teams with the football, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really feel the pressure of it. Um, you know, I think that was the question, wasn't it? Um, I didn't really feel the pressure of it too much. I think you're a bit naive when you're that young. Yeah. So you're kind of oblivious to what's going on around you. But like I said, it was you're in Coventry, you're in your hometown. People know you, they love you. Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I didn't feel that pressure. And I think, obviously, it just it helped that I knew so many people there. Like, I was comfortable. So yeah. it was, it kind of made the transition easy. And like, in my head, that's what I worked for. So I wasn't surprised when it came, it came okay. to light. So, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't like it caught me off guard. So yeah, no, I didn't really didn't really feel the pressure of it. Yeah. Okay. Who is the worst trainer at Fulham and who is the best? The worst. Oh. The worst. The worst. Um in terms of uh, I don't know. Cavs. Cavs can be bad. <laughs> Cavaliero, he can be bad. I'm gonna say him. Because he's always crying. <laughs> so I'm just going to say him to wind him up. Yeah, best trainer. Do you know who's good? The Cabano. Cabano. I give it Cabano. He's sharp in training. Oh, is it? Yeah, no. He's, you don't want to come up against him. Five of sides. He's, mm. You know if he's on your team, you're winning. Most likely. Yeah. So I'll give yeah. him that. But yeah, do you know what though? To be fair, everyone at Fulham trains, trains good. Hey, well done. Well done. No one's really like, no one's really that bad. Like, Friend. Friends. They they keep going like but yeah there's some boys that yeah I'm gonna give it caps sometimes Friends. yeah um so how did it how did the whole representing Republic of Ireland um come about because when you were like coming through yeah. was representing Republic of Ireland a thought in your head or was it more representing England that was more in, in um in your head if you were gonna represent the country. Oh, to be fair, I never really thought too much about international. Like I said, I was I was close with my nan. I used to live with her. Obviously, mm. that's where my Irish side comes from. Obviously, my dad's obviously Jamaican. My mum is Irish Lebanese. So, mm. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? It was just it was one of them. It was just obviously I'm close with my nan. I, it was just it come about when I was at actually at Coventry when I was younger. One of the coaches said. <laughs> He's like, do you want to play for a part? And I was like, yeah, like I'll happily play for a part. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's that's a dream come true. I'm really close to my nan's side of that family, Republic of Ireland. Do you know what I mean? It, it was one of them. I always I always dreamt of playing for an international, like, mm. playing for Republic of Ireland, and even like representing. Like I said, it's it's hard because you obviously got so many cultures in you and the heritage. It's just you're obviously immensely proud of them. But like mm. I said, I was close to my nan. I lived with my nan, so I knew everything about the Republic of Ireland. I knew all about that. And then I think obviously at the start, people were like, because at the point when I joined, um, I'd been speaking England under 21s. Yeah. And then it was like Republic of Ireland. But in my mind, it was, I never thought that I was going to go to to England. It was always yeah. Republic of Ireland. Mm. And then that obviously got people, took it whatever way they wanted to take it. And really? yeah, but yeah, like I was just saying, but like, yeah, people are like, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's that whole thing. Everyone, oh, well, you're not Irish, da, da, da. Like, yeah. Like, no one, be no one believed me. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. you, know, I don't look like you're stereotypical. You know, it's that kind of whole one, isn't it? Where it's like, mm. you don't look like you're Irish. You're yeah. Irish is the name Irish. Do you know what I mean? But people don't realize that you have to. People are obviously a dual heritage. Like, you respect all your heritage. It's not like, oh yeah, so and so is more than this. But people don't realize that. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was obviously it was weird. It was just like, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know they just didn't understand that they didn't yeah. believe me well at first they didn't believe me that I had I could play for Ireland yeah. and then obviously I proved it and then yeah I managed to obviously go Derby and do well and then that's when it it kind of that's when it took shape so yeah it was, yeah. It was good um, what was it like under Martin O'Neill and you know Roy, Roy Keane was it yeah Roy Keane, yeah, Roy Keane. And, um, and being at the Euros yeah no it was like for me, it was it was good in the in the Martin O'Neill. I mean, I come in when I come in, it was like we obviously we were the qualifiers for the Euros, mm. and at that time, as a group, we were doing so well. Do you know what I mean? We I came in, we played. I think Scotland. Obviously, we I think we lost to Scotland one nil. So 
they were at, obviously above us at that point. So everyone was kind of a bit like, I think Scotland thought, oh yeah, we're through. We're qualifying here now. Mm. They thought they had it in the bag. And then we go on, we play. I think we beat Gibraltar. I think we drew with Poland. And then, do you know what I mean? We beat Germany. Like, no one expected us to beat Germany like that night. It was yeah. amazing, to be fair. Like, that was obviously my, that was my second, second international start, like, competitive start. So like, I come in obviously there. Obviously, we beat Germany, and it was just like that night it was mad. And then I think from there, obviously, everyone just kind of had that. We kind of thought, yeah, you know what, this is happening. And then we mm-hmm. go Bosnia. Just everything fell into place. You know what I mean? It was night. We we know we're going in there to game. We know that we're not going to concede. Like we were good at that. Like we yeah. knew that defensively we were solid, and then we could get a goal. And I'm sure Randolph probably said, you know what I mean, like about the Germany night when he just boomed it up there, Shane Long in behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and then going to the Euros was it was good. Like, obviously, for me, it was. It was a great experience. Obviously, it would have been nice if, you know what I mean, I got a couple of minutes. And, but obviously, when you're playing against Seamus Coleman, obviously, captain, and, and obviously, mm. was flying. And I was the youngest player there as well in the, in the squad. So, it was obviously, in that sense, it was great. But if you're looking at it from a professional point of view where you want to you wanna play and, you know, you want to be a winner and compete, and mm. it was, that's tough not playing. But like, like I said, it was like Martin O'Neill was great with me. He, he obviously told me why I didn't play and how he wanted me to play there because I think that season I just I actually got young player of the year at Derby, so yeah. I was I come off the back of a good season and he obviously told me that he was like, but I just can't fit you in at, this yeah. point, at that moment in time. But you know, it was just good for me to be there, get that experience, and it kind of gives you the, the drive to get to the gives you the drive to get to the next one. Like so, yeah. And when you look at the fact that he is captain. Like, is it a bit, not not demoralising, but is it one of those ones where it's that like, it's going to be hard for you to really break in and cement your place because he is such a good player and he is captain? Or is it, is it one of those things where you're like, but as long as I'm in and around the squad involved, like, you're happy? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm happy to be, like, in and involved. Like, obviously, you're always going to be happier if you're playing, but mm. it's just that sense of pride when you get called up for your national team. Yeah. Like, so it's it's obviously it's it's great, but in terms of that, it is obviously tough because Seamus is Seamus. Everyone knows what he is. He's, he's performed at the highest level. But I think mm. when I when I come into the into the team, when obviously got injured, I I done well, and people kind of knew that. And then when he did come back, you know, we end up both playing. So <clears throat> I kind of always knew that there was options for me to play in other positions. Yeah, and. And we could obviously, like, even if you speak to him and I spoke to him about it, he's like, yeah, maybe both of us can play on the same side. Do you know what I mean? I've played right-hand side of a centre-half of the three. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've played on the wing. So it's, there was obviously them options there. Like, I never seen it as that. Never demoralising. Do you know what I mean? It's, it gives you the extra, extra bite, like, yeah. to, to prove yourself and do better. And, and that's obviously, if, if, if you don't, if you haven't got that in you, then there's no point. Like, if you're going to get demoralised over that, then, yeah. What's he, you know what's, I mean? he what's he like? Off the pitch, Seamus Coleman. Uh, he's the nicest man ever. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? He just he does everything right. Do you yeah. know what I mean? He's, he's just a family man. He's private. Keeps himself to himself. But when he's on the pitch, like he's, he's competitive. Like he's just mm. got that. He's got that edge. And I don't think people realise what a great player he is. Yeah. Until you play with him. Mm. Like some people have said to me, I'm like, no. Like if you play with this guy, you understand. And yeah. Then, I think people then just started to realise how good he was and then it's so tough that obviously he, he broke his leg, you know what I mean? That that horror tackle and then But he's he's come back as if Yeah. But that's shameless. Yeah. Yeah. Because he would have just done everything right. Like he would have yeah. lived his life right, rehab a lot. You know what I mean? He wouldn't have took it for liberties. Yeah. He's just a he's just a top professional he's just nicest man ever. Like he's a proper like he's a captain, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He just but he just wants to, he's just not, like I said, he's private, just family man, just wants to keep himself to himself. And like he's got that edge when he gets on the pitch. It's a different Seamus to the one off the pitch. Yeah. Um, what's your advice to the youth? Oh, sugar, I can't read. What's your advice to the youth coming up? Um, just work hard. Just, just do your thing. Stay out of trouble. Mm. It's just, if you've got a... If you're aiming to to make it to the top or become a professional footballer, then just just stick to your goals. And if if you've got people around you that aren't allowing you to reach them goals, then then stay far away from them. Just surround yourself with the right people. And I think at the end of the day, the hard work, sacrifices they pay off. Like I think that's where people they don't realize the the journey is is what makes you as simple as like so. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be ups and downs, but 
it might not happen overnight. It might not happen a month, two months, three months. I yeah. think that's what people, they have to be patient and stick through it. And if you keep working through it, then at the end of it, that's where, that's where the success comes and, and it definitely will pay off at, at some point. So yeah, definitely patience and hard work. Yeah. Like someone just said there, hard work pays off. Simple. That's my little brother, funny enough. Is it, yeah? Yeah, my little brother. Shout him out every time. Sean. Yeah. He's actually Irish. Imagine that. So down there. Yeah? He's Irish. He lives in Dublin. Oh, man. Yeah. So. Where about? We're back in Dublin. You don't even know him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Ask him. <laughs> I don't know that, man. But, um, would you say people love Mitchell because he's big and, big and scary or because he's actually that good? Nah, he's good. <laughs> and he's big and scary. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a beast, man. He's in the gym. Mm. Oh, 24-7, he loves the gym. But yeah, yeah no, nah, he's good. Like He's got the hold-up play, do you know what I mean? He can finish. He's good in the air. He's not that quick. Do you know what I mean? That's his only thing. <laughs> yeah, he's not that quick. But, do you know what I mean? But when you're that strong, you can just run and just barge people off but mm. you give him half a chance you know he's scoring like, yeah. and he, he works hard for the team like he just wants to win he's a winner so yeah like, um, I don't know who Stephen Kenny is who's Stephen Kenny? oh he's a new new manager Irish manager national team I haven't seen it so there you go yeah are you excited to work under Steve, Stephen Kenny? yeah I mean it should be it should be good I think he's, he's done really well to the League of Ireland and then he went into the twenty ones and done really well with them. He <clears throat> he plays a good brand of football, mm. like, attractive. Was that everyone to play? Do you know what I mean? So it should be it should be good. I mean, to it's for him to come in, and then obviously he's he's got the chance of getting to the Euros and and the World Cup. Mm. So we're only only a couple of games away from from qualifying for the Euros. So yeah, he's got that that extra motivation, and I think it'll be it'll be good for us the way the way the lad and, and want to play and. It's going to be obviously different to other managers, but you know I can't. I've not worked with him yet, so you know it'll be great to to work under him. And like I said, that's oh. that's the aim. You wanna you wanna play as many international games as you can. So hopefully, uh, hopefully little, he'll call me up. A little bit of a a little bit of a pitch there, mate. Like, yeah, mate. He, he's gonna call you up, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For another <But>, CV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, if you're watching, if you're watching, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I right, Pippa, pick you up every time. Um, everyone, go and follow Pippa. She's really, really good with all her um, her little chats and interviews, and she loves Arsenal, so even better. Um, what I'm gonna say to you. So now, I'm, what we do on these lives is um, I'm gonna ask you to do a five side compiled of people that you've played with okay okay so yeah the floor is yours pick your best five aside team of players that you've played with um right in goal goal is tough and um, i'm gonna go randolph randolph safe hands yeah safe i didn't want to hear last week yeah no i'll say rands because obviously i Played with Shea Given, but mm. he was at the back end of his career. And yeah, I played with Randolph. By far, for me, underrated. He's the best keeper I played with. Um, Randolph. Yeah, I'm gonna send this to him after. Yeah, no. Nice. <laughs> do you know what the difference with Randolph? Like, he's just he's so chilled. Like keepers are usually a bit crazy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, no, he is like, he's super chill. Yeah, he's super chilled. Like he doesn't rant and rave. Like, like. Oh. Okay, you're there. Yeah, he doesn't run and rave if like defenders make a mistake. Like he doesn't even say nothing. He's just mm. like, he's just cool about it. So yeah, Randolph. But um, would you actually not? If I think a lot of the time, but yeah, no. Would you say that a keeper getting onto you when you know you it actually helps, or would you be like, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes it helps, but then sometimes it's just too much. Like mm. annoying me. Like you're putting me off a bit. Yeah, I played with some keepers that are constantly shouting at you. Like, I know what I'm trying to do here. Like, well, yeah. if I don't get there within a matter of seconds, like, but like, there's nothing. It's not going to harm them, but they just keep constantly at you, at you. But obviously, mm. I understand some people are like that because they want to keep themselves going. But yeah, yeah nah, some keepers. Yeah, but Randolph is is chilled. Like, he tells you when you need to be told. Uh, and then, like, you just... TV. Yeah, yeah. 
Like when he tells you, then you you listen. But when they're constantly going yeah. at you, you just you switch off. Yeah, um, yeah. You I got, don't enjoy that. But yeah, um, you got Rand- Randolph in goal. Randolph, West Ham, um, Barry Randolph. I'm gonna put Wes Hulahan in there. Unbelievable. Oh, who else put him in? Where's Hula? Bradley Johnson. Was yeah. Bradley Johnson that put Hulahan? Yeah. yeah. He's unbelievable. Mm. It's, it's, you can't get a ball off him in training. It's so sure. crazy because you see even in a game him. like he should have played. Like if he went into a top four team, like he would have been comfy. Like you think so? Yeah, definitely. Well, when we beat Germany, like he was running mm. the show. Like for us anyway. Like just, yeah. You just know the ball. He could like do stuff and he'll lose it a lot or whatever. Like, but then he'll, out of nowhere he'll just do something unbelievable. Like, just dribble past ten players. And, yeah, yeah, no, hands down, one of the best, one of the best players I've played with. It's not the best. Yeah. Where's Hulan? Okay. Yeah, I will stick Where's Hulan in there? Um, why well, it's tough? Let me. I'll stay away from the strikers for now. Um, so that's two. Uh, defenders, um, defenders, defenders. I put a defender in there. I'd say, um, I'll put Seamus Coleman in. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Seamus Coleman. I really touched on it. It's a good mm. player, unbelievable. Um, do you know I mean defensively and offensively? Um, so yeah, I'll go with Seamus. Randolph, Three. Randolph, Hulahan, um, Coleman, two more. Strikers tough. I, I think I played with some good strikers. Got Robbie Keane, Oof, Marlon, Marlon King, Callum Wilson. Ah, oh, um, remember Marlon King? Darren Bent. Um, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a tough one, Metro. Do you know what I'm saying? It's it's tough to tough to choose from there. Um, you got I've got Robbie Keane, do you know what I mean? Robbie Keane. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not mad at that. That's, Yeah, that's yeah. How good was Robbie oh. Keane? Unbelievable. Like finishing, touch. Mm. I like, just like used to see him after training, he, he, someone ping the ball in touch, top in. Left yeah. foot, right foot. Do you know what I mean? It was just it was comfy. Do you know what? Someone just put Babel there. You know what? I was, I was waiting. You know what? I was waiting <laughs> well, to see if you're going to put yeah, just Yeah. You know I, it's hard. You know when someone tells you, like, oh, this five, I'm trying to, to like... Him? I know he was in it before. Yeah, I'm trying to like retrace back to like people I played with. But yeah, like Babel, definitely, yeah. Nah. Yeah, I'll put him in 100%. He was, he was a joke. Um, and, and a lot of people only saw him. Yeah. Um, at, but it, no, he's a but, beast though yeah but he's and I think it says a lot about him because yeah he's he's 30 30 odd right but he's still moving like he's like he's 23 24 like he looks after himself like the guy his quads were massive like mm. he was like, strong quick I don't know I don't know what he does but yeah he's looked yeah. after himself he's a good guy as well do you know what I mean he, he, he would help people out he taught them through the game and like he mm. thought like you could do something he'd tell you like just do this like I'm yeah. going to be there like <clears throat> so he made your life easier so um, is that your five then or are you taking out Robbie Keane was that no that was was that five so look Darren Randolph Hulahan Coleman Keane Babu yeah that's five yeah yeah no I'll keep it at that that's good you sure yeah no I'll take that okay I'll take cool. that I think that's everyone Cool. Probably, yeah, I can't think of everyone that I played with. It's tough to, to remember. But yeah, no, them ones, definitely. I think, uh, I'm just going to keep going through a couple more. Uh, okay, because we ain't really spoken too much about Derby. Did you enjoy your time at Derby County? <laughs> yeah, no, I enjoyed my time at Derby. Everyone knows this whole thing where it come out saying I didn't enjoy my time. It's, no, I did enjoy my time. It just obviously ended. It ended bad on bad terms. Mm. Which I probably didn't help. Um, I didn't help the matters, that's for sure. Yeah, but they didn't help the matters either in terms of the people that were coming at me. Um, so yeah, I'm not taking all the blame. But no, no disrespect to Andre, but he didn't make the squad. He was a World Cup <laughs> winner. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I could have handled it better. Mm. But yeah, no, Derby, I loved it. Like I was there for three years. I got on. It was one of the best change rooms I've been in in terms of so many people got on. Yeah. It was just, yeah, it was a good team. Good club. And 
also, but... if if you want to hear him talk about more, talk more about what actually happened and all that, um, it's on my podcast with him. So, plug, plug obviously. Come on. <laughs> um, um, this question for you. Go on. See, look, now he's... This is, this is what it started from with Derby. This is the whole thing that I come from. I did, <laughs> I, I did not say that in my interview. <laughs> in my interview. So the journalist that wasn't even there decided to obviously, you know what journalists are like. Yeah. What they can be like, do you know what I mean? They they try to put a headline that's got nothing to do with anything. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What annoyed me the most is that at that time it was when my uncle, so we had a couple of days off between going to uh, New York to play Mexico. And yeah. I went back to, my uncle had to go into the hospice. So you know when you go to hospice, there's not my long, long left to live. That got picked up on the whole interview was about that. And then at the end, they asked me one question. Yeah. One question. And that's what I'm saying about negativity. Like, no one wants to pick up on positive stuff. Yeah. If you look at that, everyone are, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, as soon as you put something negative or that can be construed to be negative, then, yeah, everyone wants to jump on it. No yeah. one wants is that to why? You, no, one, no one wants to give you your props for nothing. Is that why um, yeah. a lot of players just stay away from... Yeah. Uh, I, just, I don't blame them. Yeah, just stay. Like, you, can't, you can't say anything without it being twisted. Yeah. So, well, that's, that's why. Much more twist all yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I mean. It gets twisted. You're like, you. That's why, like, people are, yeah, footballers answers like robots. You have to answer like a robot because you yeah. say the wrong thing. That's that's it. Like, people are yeah. always looking for you. And people want to see you fail. Yeah. Like, everyone's got to remember that. They want to see you fail. So, they're always looking for something to bring you down. Like, if things are going good, yeah. you're doing good things, they just look for they look for that little piece of negativity that, oh, yeah, do you know what? Let's set him off track. Let's, yeah. let's get him. Let's put him off. But, and then there's, some people might melt. Some people might crumble. But listen, okay. I know if I'm doing good, then I'm, I'm at peace with myself. So yeah. uh, listen, really matter, uh, Cyrus, you're, you're going to get the call up to the, to the Republic of Ireland squad, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? Nah, <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't even a plug. That, <laughs> uh, cool. that was even... Literally just over a minute left. So, um, yeah. guys, Thank you very much for joining and watching Daps Can Chat. Um, yeah, this will be on my YouTube, on the Account Attack Pod YouTube. So make sure you go and follow and check out some of the other ones we've had. So we've had Patrick Van Anholt, Darren Randolph, Bradley White Phillips. Did you see all the Patrick Van Anholt and um, Wamba Saka and Trent thing um, earlier on this week, by any chance? All the comparisons. Did you post that? Yeah. Someone posted it. Yeah. That all come from. That all come from. Oh, oh yeah, you're but, dropping um, things in, man. I see that. Yeah, so I guess um, it ended. guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Cyrus, hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I want to do a giveaway, and I want to give away um, a signed Fulham shirt. Is that okay? Yeah, I ain't got any on me at the minute, but I can get one. No, there. no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll sort it. <laughs> but just so yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. No, no, that's cool. Spot. But um, yeah, I'm going to give away a signed Cyrus shirt um, in time. How we do that, we don't know, but we'll get it done. Yeah. But um, yeah, guys, thank you very much, Cyrus. It's been a pleasure. No worries, man. Thanks for having me, Will. Take right. it easy. Everyone, right. see ya. Players, players are coming. Look after yourself, Will.